So I recently made a video about this, which is my fire tornado machine. And it's a few feet tall and it's a box made of polycarb. And uh, when you light a fire inside of it and close the door, it completely by itself makes a fire tornado. And I think that that's really cool. And uh, after looking online a little bit, actually after building this, um, I had seen some videos, but I hadn't looked at a lot of them. And I did not actually see a design that was able to make a fire tornado vortex like this passively. You always have to be spinning a screen or blowing fans on it or drawing air from the top or something like that. So I wanted to make another video that showed just how easy it is to build one of these things, nope. in, except in cases of uh, wind gusts. And uh, I'm going to make it out of cardboard because I eat way too many Nutrigrain bars at work. So I have boxes to kill. So you can literally make one of these out of cardboard. And uh, I'm going to time myself here. I, I guess that it takes less than 15 minutes to uh, put it completely together. I need to find the block of wood to put this out. So. The first trick is the basket that's actually inside of that that holds onto the fire. And in the case of this fire tornado, it is actually the uh, bottom of a like soup can, just a tin can, and it has uh, some cotton balls in it that have been soaked in lighter fluid, and that's what makes it burn. However, there is an even easier way to do this, although if you have a saw and the ability to cut off a soup can, I would recommend doing that because it's a little bit safer. But if you don't want to do that, you can make the exact same thing out of aluminum foil. So, oh, it's actually a brand new thing of aluminum foil. Ugh. So, get a piece of aluminum foil, maybe a foot square and fold it over a couple times. All you need to do to make a basket capable of holding fire, get something that's kind of almost round and uh, keep folding it up because you want it to be thicker rather than not. And then wrap it around the bottom end of something like a uh, Gatorade bottle. In this case, I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a whole bunch of water bottles out here so that since I'm building this out of cardboard, I'll be able to put it out if it uh, catches fire. Because this particular design, because it's got like spikes on it, means that you can't stifle it as easily as something in the can. So I want to be able to pour water on it. I think that's pretty reasonable. So I have water and water and more water and stuff. So. The base for the fire tornado, instead of plywood over here, is going to be the cereal box. So close the cereal box, it's really not very difficult. Now the walls are slightly more difficult. I'm going to make those out of these boxes. I've got a whole bunch of the exact same box, so it should be pretty easy to do. So the fire tornado is going to be about that tall when it's done figure that's a decent size. So the trick is that you need to get uh, make a, a hexagon out of these and to stagger them so that they don't all actually uh, line up and when the air is drawn in by the fire the air gets drawn in at an angle and that's what actually forces the rotation. In fact I've got a, uh, another video that I posted about this that has uh, all of the how it works and all the detailed background and I thought it was really interesting so you should go watch that video when you're done watching this and building a fire tornado. So I'm going to open up all these boxes.
All right, so now I have six unfolded boxes, and these are going to become the six walls of my fire tornado. Except one of them I'm going to be a little bit fancy with, and because I want to be able to see the fire tornado from the side, I'm going to make a window out of some saran wrap, or what, cling wrap here, and uh, that way we'll be able to see the flame. After all, this thing is made of polycarb. You can see all the way through it. Need some kind of window in this, make it look cool. Right, so we have box with window. And I'm really hoping that this saran wrap doesn't melt. I have not attempted to actually build this before making this video. So we will see how this goes. But uh, I'm going to use a couple layers and uh, put some tape around it when I'm done. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see. If not, I've got another box. So I'll make it work one way or another. Except the wind is making this exceedingly difficult. Okay, so overlaps a little bit can see right through it, but it'll block the air. That's the important thing. It just has to be remotely airtight and it'll work for this. So there we go. I have panel with window. It is airtight. It's not very flat, but I think that it's going to do the job. I'm going to set that aside because that's now <laughs> more valuable of the worked on pieces here. So back to the box. I want to figure out roughly where the middle is going to be, ish. Um, what you don't want to do is have any openings where air can get in that where the air is not being guided by these veins. You want all of the air that's entering the chamber to be forced to come through the boxes because then you can direct it. So I'm going to just take the fatter end of this that's already bent and uh, just kind of tape all these down around the edges. And actually, I'm going to take this box and I'm going to bend up all the little flaps here and I'm just going to tape those together. I'm going to see if that holds it vertical enough. I'm not convinced whether it will or not. I might have to uh, break down and use cardboard. Actually, I can use cardboard from the window that I cut out earlier. That's what I'm going to do. All right. So. Now these will, huh, the wind wasn't there, these will kind of stand up, the bottoms will stand up by themselves, but there's still a hinge right there. So I'm going to take little strips that I cut out of the window and actually tape those in at an angle here to try to hold that, uh, hold all of these lengthwise in place. So it looks like I've only got four good pieces, so I'm only going to do this to four of them, and I'm going to hope that the other two are held up by the fact that the other ones are rigid. I will put aside the window and one other regular cornered piece, and to the other four that have their corners on them, I'm going to attach these hopefully make them a little more rigid. That'll be good enough. Even in the wind, it's actually holding up to the wind. It's a good plan. Maybe four more just or three more just like it. Make four.
now we need to stick them to the base. That's actually a lot easier than it seems like. Because all of these are angled on the bottom, I'm just going to put a piece of tape flat here, and if I need it, oop, that one didn't work very well. Uh, put a piece of tape on the flat here, and if I need it, put another piece of tape on the other side. And uh, by staggering them around, I should be able to make a vortex out of it. So, see if it works. This one. Oh, okay. They need to be out like that. So, yeah, that answers that. So I've got three. They're starting to overlap a little bit. You can see. Well, I don't know if you can really see with the light. You can kind of see that they're overlapping. <laughs> it just kind of opens up when there's uh, nothing holding it together at the top. Either it opens up or it all caves in, you know, that's the, that's the other alternative. Now, I have all six attached in a spiral. I need to attach them at the top, but I had to tip it over because there was too much wind out here. What happened to the tape? Here we go. Really don't need much tape at all at the top. In fact, I taped together the top of this thing. Oh, you can see all the little red dots. So that's just duct tape on top that holds the flex together so it doesn't fall out. So, same problem, whether you're using cardboard or, uh, or polycarb. All right, so this is the body of the fire tornado. In fact, you can even see there's a window in there and it's all ready to go except for actually putting the fire in the bottom of the box. In fact, you can see right down here that all of these are offset just a little bit, and that is what is actually going to make the rotation. Okay. So, use our little tin foil <laughs> firebox here. It's going to be. Uh, as simple as getting a few cotton balls. Let's see, in the big model I use seven. Uh, I think that here I'm probably going to go with four. And uh, actually, you can fold the foil down a little bit and hold on to them. That seems to be working pretty well. Take take lighter fluid and literally just pour it in there. You want to be really careful you don't get it on your hands because hands catching fire is bad. <laughs> and to insulate this, to uh, insulate the fire from the bottom of the cardboard, I'm actually going to use another piece of tin foil and uh, just kind of crunch it up underneath so that there's a little bit of a buffer of, of insulation where. We don't have fire and cardboard right next to each other because that's typically a bad combination. Sadly, I don't have any high temperature duct tape with me right now, so I'm using this stuff. So it might fall apart too, we, we just don't know. This, this looks really terrible. This is why I recommend using a soup can. It's so much better. But this is my little firebox that is <laughs> suspended from whatever you set it on. A little 
bit of tape to hold it in place. I'm going to stick this right in the middle. Wipe off my hands in case I had any lighter fluid, because again, that would be bad. Actually, I am pre. Oop. I'm almost out of battery. I'm going to preemptively drip a little water in here around it, just for good measure, and uh, light it. Shall we? Safety glasses are all fogged up. There we go. Getting rotation? We are we're getting rotation. It is just that easy to make a fire tornado. So, man, actually this is starting to sag a little bit already and the, uh, the cardboard's starting to get hot, but it is a fire tornado. So, check out my other video to see how this one works and uh, get more details about how it was made and uh, thanks for watching hope you'll learn something about physics making a fire tornado <laughs>